Hi, welcome to another episode of Inside the UBC. I'm your host, Jim Grady. We're going to continue focusing on the techniques in our kickboxing classes. Focusing today on the roundhouse kick. This is, you know, one of those techniques that once you got it, um, you know, you got it. But getting it there can be a bit challenging. So I'm going to go ahead and take you step by step uh, through the round kick and how to execute it. You know, going to the high round kicks, a lot of people like to kick up high, but also we're going to talk about low kicks, also known as, some people call them leg kicks or cutting kicks, and uh, you can put those in your kickboxing classes as well. You know, I'm a big believer when it comes to techniques uh, in your kickboxing classes to add variety to get the results you're looking for, to make sure you have that muscle confusion that everybody talks about. You can throw this kick in so many different ways. Like I said, you can kick high, you can kick low, you can kick harder, you can kick slower. So many different ways uh, to work the body with just one technique. Now, I do have a student of mine, uh, one of our students here at the National UBC Center, and this is Amber Kim. Amber, would you come out here, please? Thank you so much for having, uh, coming out and joining us. Now, what, if Amber is going to go ahead and demonstrate the round kick. I'm going to basically teach it to her. Now, of course, she's trained before, and you'll see she has some experience, but I want to kind of use her to illustrate how you want to do this kick. Now, first thing, Amber, let's go ahead and get our guarding stance facing towards the heavy bag. Guys, I cannot emphasize enough. This is something I really emphasize in my, especially my level two kickboxing, some of my more advanced students. Balance is everything. If you want to, Amber, just go ahead and square to the bag for me. This is a great drill to do before you start your kickboxing class. Square to the bag, so in other words, your left foot's on the left side of the bag or, or in line with the left side of the bag, your right foot's in line with the right foot of the bag. Take your left foot, step straight forward, point your toes, you're pointing right at the center line. We talk a lot about center lines in our bags, in our training. In other words, we're cutting that bag in half and I'm gonna point that front toe right at it. I'm gonna take that back foot, turn it more off at a 45 degree angle with my knees bent. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm always soft in the knees. 50% of the weight should be on the front foot, 50% on the back. So my weight is even and distributed, but my weight distribution is going towards my toes. Amber, do this for me. Go up on the ball of your feet. Okay, that's pretty easy. Now let's go back in those heels. Whoa, as you can tell, the majority of our balance is in the ball of our feet. So we want to make sure our weight is slightly forward. Knees bent, back heel off the ground. That's real important when it comes to the roundhouse kick, understanding the importance of weight distribution and keeping the weight on the ball of the foot, especially if you'd like to take class with shoes on. Not as important if you take your shoes off, but if you have shoes on, you don't rotate properly, you can hurt yourself. Now, Amber, the first thing I want you to concentrate on a, on a roundhouse kick. First of all, have you ever swung a baseball bat before? Okay, well most of us have. So when we swing a baseball bat, we're coming in this motion. Well, a round kick's kind of similar that way. The only difference is your legs to the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in a circular motion and I want you to turn your toe out. This is real important, folks. Now, Amber, you used to be a dancer, right? A, a classical dance. Um, so she has a lot of flexibility. She's also young, so there's a lot of flexibility in the hips and her knees. She could probably get away with pointing her toe right at this target and still rotating her hip. It's not going to bother her at all. But if you're, you know, older like me, or maybe not as flexible as Amber is, it's super important that one of the first thing you do is turn that toe out. Because my goal is to bring the kick in a circular motion and to rotate my hip. And by doing that, by turning that toe out, that's a very natural movement. If I don't do that, my toe is pointing straight to the target, this is a common injury, and I just try to, and I try to turn that hip over, I can put stress on my knee. So please be careful, also stress in the hip. So the first thing, Amber, let's do this. Let's go ahead and take that left foot, step out with it. You're gonna chamber the kick, and I always like to utilize the term of a, of a, of a whip. Your foot's back as far as it can, and it's like you're gonna kick over a table. You come across, and then you bring it back. A lot of people, when they throw their kick, they'll kick and just drop it. That's just bad form, folks. You gotta control the kick, all right? So we gotta throw the kick and pull it back, and then sit down and step back, or kick and let it bounce back. Either one's good. Amber, give us a couple roundhouse kicks, would you? She's gonna step out with that toe and round kick. Ooh, nice kick. Try it again. Wow, nice. Nice. Now, if you notice, Amber has good hand position. Keeps your hands up by her face like I like to see. Here to add to your round kick, to add a little bit more power and to get some good flexion in our abdominals and our oblique area. When you throw this kick, take the kicking side, the right hand, and pull with it. That helps create power. You get kind of an opposite equal reaction as you pull. And also, proper form, the other hand comes up to your face to protect your face. Now, common mistake. 
And I don't teach this until a student has done this a while because beginners will do this. And what they'll do is they pull the shoulder back, not the hand back, and then all of a sudden they're wrenching their back. You've got to be sure. You turn the toe out, and this is something you add. Once you've got the motion down, you can add that pull. And the other hand comes out to protect the face. Try that hammer, would you please? Oh, ooh, that's a nice kick. Look at that. Boy, I wish that all my students learned as quickly as this gal does. Nice job, Amber. Okay, now, see, she's got a nice kick. You know, that's, I'm sure you can get up here. Try a couple high ones for us. Come on, impress your family and friends. Bam, look at that. All right, very good. Again, good flexibility. But, you know, I like to think that the techniques that I learn in my kickboxing class can also help me defend myself. And guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, don't try to kick somebody in the head if they attack you. It's just not smart, all right? It might work in the ring, but in the street, they can grab your foot, you can slip, all those sort of things. We're gonna outwork a low kick. Bam, it's called a cutting kick or a leg kick. Now, if you really wanna know how devastating this is, they ever do this for me, put your left leg forward, put your weight on it. Guys at home, take your hand and just kinda hit the side of your leg right there. Ooh, that kind of hurts, doesn't it? Feels like a charlie horse. That's a, the sciatic nerves run right along the quadricep here. And if you ever watch any kickboxing, whether it's mixed martial arts or especially the tie fighters, they kick right there. Because if you get really blasted there and you're not used to it, ooh, you drop like a sack of potatoes. So the police officers use this, use this, and I recommend for developing this kick. Now the difference is, Amber, throw that round kick again high for me. You notice that she strikes with the instep in the foot. But on a cutting kick, we're actually trying to take our shin bone and blast down. And if you notice, I'm kind of leaning back because I don't want to get caught with their punch. So I go down and I'm taking my shin to their quadricep, to their leg, as I come. All right, now again, full rotation. In fact, the tie fighters come up and down to the point, bang, what they miss, they come all the way around. It's such a commitment. Now, of course, we're hitting heavy backs, so we're not going to do that. But this is just a great kick. Again, we still have the pull. We still have that base coming up. And bam, cutting kick. Try that a few times, Amber. There you go. Oh, nice kick. Look at the pow. Woo, that hurts just looking at it. Give me one more good one. Bam. All right. That's called the leg kick or the cutting kick. And it's the round kick. Okay, again, part of your uh, kickboxing class techniques. Round kick's very powerful. And the last thing I'm going to show you, when you throw your punches and you throw your kicks, think of weight shifting. Weight shifts forward, bam. Weight shifts back, bam. And then when I'm doing the cutting kick or the round kick, all the way come forward. Again, we talk about power, self-defense, forward, back, forward. We'll try that one last time. We'll finish off with this, a right, left, right. Power shifts into the right hand, ready to fire, right? Left, right, round kick. Bam! So, if you notice, she's got pretty long legs. That's pretty tight for her. I can either step back and fire the kick, or a little bit more advanced, bang, bang, step to the left, off the side, to fire the kick. Try that. Just right, left kick. Right, left, bang. One more time. Right, left, bang. All right. Nice job, Amber. Excellent, excellent. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, lesson on the roundhouse kick. Again, I'm Jim Graydon. And again, thanks, Amber, for helping us today. And we'll see you next time on Inside the UBC.